Hey guys, what is up? This is Cody. Orex Code A, how's it going today? Welcome to today's video, part four of the Juvie experience. So at this point, I was just waiting patiently, like counting the days in my head, trying to make days go by as fast as possible, doing anything I can to keep my mind occupied and just focusing on there's only this amount of days left until my next court date, this amount of days on top of the anxiety of knowing that when I go to this next court date, it's probably not going to go well because the last time clearly didn't go well when the judge thought I was going to go out and do heroin or something crazy. So I have five, five mini stories to tell you within this one story, storyception. And one of them happened the moment I got back into Juvie. I told you guys that, you know, I was crying on the way back to Juvie because I... I thought I was getting out that day and the judge was saying some crazy stuff. Really quick before the story continues, if you guys are interested in HHC, I started a company recently, snazzysesh.com. If you guys are into HHC vapes or gummies, we got four different flavors of vapes, two different flavors of HHC gummies. If you guys are interested in that, check out the pinned comment below, snazzysesh.com. Enjoy the video. So after I composed myself and got back to the juvie, it was only me and like two other people that were getting escorted back to C block. So I was following the staff member back to C block and I remember hearing like a bunch of commotion, just like a bunch of screaming. And I turn the corner and I hear a door slam. So I whip my head around and I look at the door and one of the kids in there, like this really big dude, tried to escape from juvie i look over at the door that he was trying to get out of which was one of the doors that if he got through that he actually might have been able to escape like it was right near the front door in the door hand this metal door handle to like a big beefy door was completely bent and broken to the side like he was almost there like he he really put a lot of effort into this and he bent a metal door handle and like, like the door handle was just like kind of hanging there. My only guess is he was in like a van that just came back from the courthouse, like a separate one that was in like, you know, the kids that were in there for worse stuff. And he probably got like a long extension on his sentence or something and he was not having it. And he just wanted to escape, but didn't make it very far. I remember that just got me thinking like, wow, there is just no way out of this. Like there's no way to escape out of this. And I remember asking one of the staff members if anybody's ever escaped. And of course they're like, no, never. You kidding me, dude? There's no way to do that. I remember that day at like the rec time. This is what it looked like, by the way. I found like a Google images of like what the courtyard looked like where we could, I wouldn't say calling going outside once a day. It was just like you could see the sky. There was a little turf and basketball. It was really all it was. I remember looking up and seeing like this pipe that kind of like went down from the roof and like thinking in my head, all right, I've watched Prison Break, the TV show, enough times to realize that if I got a ladder, a makeshift ladder up there and climbed up the pipe, I can get on the roof and then somehow escape. Obviously, I wasn't going to do this, but I was just like thinking in my head, dude, Michael Schofield, like, how am I going to get out of this? But I also just remember feeling so bad for that kid, like regardless of what he did. I mean, maybe he did some real messed up stuff or something like, but there's no telling him it because like if I was in there for, you know, 10 grams of that sticky icky and a grinder like it seemed to me like it was easy to get into a situation like this and a lot of the kids in there like i remember talking to a staff member and they said that some people just had such a bad home life that they actually preferred to be in juvenile detention which blew my mind entirely every night when everybody was in their cells and like going to sleep it was just time to go to sleep uh one of the kids in there that was in the seat block was like probably I'd say behind me, like the most behaved kid, I was on my top best behavior. I was trying to get out of there, dude. I wasn't trying to start any type of trouble. I wasn't trying to do anything that could possibly extend my sentence. I was trying to get out. And this dude was in the facility for a very long time, but he was also very well behaved, very well mannered. And he actually, he got the privilege of, I know privilege, this sounds weird. He had the privilege of being able to like, use the janitor kind of mopping station and just mop up around the the c block like in front of the cells like wipe down the chairs and he would do that every night at like midnight or one in the morning and i remember like just hearing noise and just getting up and looking out the window like seeing what it was and it was just him mopping but on this night he got a phone call or something right in the middle of like mopping up and, and i remember he started yelling so i got up from the cell looked through the little window and i just see him so angry like this a side of him that i haven't seen before he was just so well-mannered and nice and 
didn't really speak to anybody. He was looking so intimidating. The staff was like not even near him. Like, dude, just calm down, just calm down. And he takes the entire janitor station, picks it up over his head and throws it at the wall. And at that point, the staff moved in, like brought him to the ground and like, you know, restrained him and everything. But it wasn't like all those videos where you see the cops like pin someone to the ground, like stop resisting, like nothing like that. They were just like, calm down, man, you're okay. Like they're actually being really consoling, but like same time, this dude just threw the janitor mop off the top rope. Like this guy was all over the place. I remember going to sleep that night, just feeling real bad for him. Like I wonder what that phone call was, maybe like a family member passed or something. I think it was the next day we all went to lunch. It was the middle of the day. And there was this one kid that would be all, he was like the class clown type kid. Like he would always be doing anything to like make people laugh. And, and the entire time I was in there, all of the kids would always be complaining, oh, this food sucks. It's all, you know, it's terrible. I remember one of the first days I got on there, I asked one of the kids, like, how's the food here, dude? You know, and he looked at me and he's like, don't eat the meat, like straight face. And I'm like, why? He's just like, don't eat it. You'll find out if you eat it. I think that was one of the reasons I only ate the fruit cups for like the entirety I was in there and the breakfast. All right, listen, mate, you can't mess up pancakes and French toast. You can't do that. All right, listen. So the next day was actually July 4th. So I spent July 4th of this year locked up, dude. No fireworks for me today. But the funny thing I remember about it was, well, there's two things that happened. One of them was all of the parents were allowed to come in and like kind of visit in the courtyard area. They had like tables set up and like food. And it was cool because my dad got to come and I got to see him twice in a day, dude. He actually ended up driving to the juvie twice, not just for the 4th of July event, but then for visitation time later in the day. Just an overall great dad, am I right? But the funny thing that happened was before this July 4th event, all of the kids in C Block were all talking about how on July 4th, it was free game, dude. It was the, it was target practice day because of all of the fireworks going on, they would use that opportunity with all of like the booms in the air happening to try to test out their guns to shoot stop signs like that that just blew my mind entirely like i never heard any, anything like that before i thought it was number one crazy but number two kind of smart like low key dude. so i kind of got ahead of myself a little bit july 4th i think that was the day before i had a, the next court date but there was one thing that happened i think it was the day before that was the most memorable moment in all of the whole juvie experience and i know that you guys if you guys watched the old og juvie experience i think i uploaded it in like 2016 it was a long time ago long before i had to delete all my videos this this is the moment that everybody seemed to enjoy the most out of the whole video the work hard play hard moment listen this was when when i was in juvenile detention this was when Wiz Khalifa dropped Work Hard, Play Hard, which was a hit. It was all over the radio. It was the only song that was on the radio for like weeks. And it was like midday. Everybody was was watching. I think Discovery Channel was like the only thing that they'd really allow uh, to be watched. Sometimes they'd switch it over to something funny. And then when one of the supervisors would come in, the staff would be like, just change it over to Discovery Channel really quick. But there was a moment where the staff had their back turned. One of the kids grabbed the remote, low key, kind of walked away with it, like put it in his pocket. And he was sitting at one of the back tables, swapped the channel to like, you know, one of those like 130 channels that just plays music all day. And Work Hard, Play Hard by Wiz Khalifa came on the TV. This dude maxed the volume out on the TV and then hid the remote somewhere. The staff members like, who's got the remote? Turn this down. Who's got the remote? And all of the kids in the C block got on the tables and started screaming the lyrics to work hard, play hard. Dude, I had the biggest smile on my face because I loved the song and like all the kids were going so crazy. It was like the craziest moment in the entire time that I was there. But I just like backed up, went into my cell and I'm like, oh, I'm not part of this. Like, I love this. Song. I'm not part of this, though, dude. I'm not trying to get an extension on my, my sentence right now. The entire song played out until they finally gave up the remote. I think he like hit it behind a trash can or something. They finally found it, turned the TV off. Everybody had to go to bed early that night or something like it was it was not good, dude. They were pissed. So the day finally came like I was counting down the days and this was the day that I finally had my last court date. The court date that I finally was able to get released from this place. I had the biggest smile on my face all day. Like today's, 
today's the day, you know, today's the day that I'm probably going to get out. All the staff members were trying to assure me like, dude, you're definitely going to get out today. There's no way you had great behavior in here. All they had was, a, you know, 10 grams of Kush and listen, that's all you had. So you didn't do anything violent. It's your first offense. You're going to get out of here. No problem. So I was like, really, I, ha I had a lot of anxiety thinking like, oh man, they, they said that last time and I didn't get out. I remember having a, a meeting with like a staff member I haven't talked to. It was basically someone that was gonna just like determine whether if I learned anything from the experience. And I remember one of the questions was like, so are you gonna get out here and start selling selling Kush? And I'm like, no, I would never do that. I had this, dude, I had Ricky from Trailer Park Boys attitude. I, I was just like looking her straight in the face. Like I would never do that. You know, <laughs> they didn't find the scale or, or anything like that. So listen, there was, there was no, there's no indication that that's what I was doing. All right. Listen. And that kind of gave me even more confidence of like, all right, now there's like a paper saying that like, oh, I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to do anything more. I'm done. I'm, I'm straight edge kid from now on type of type of vibe. And it was maybe two hours before I was about to leave in that van, head to the courthouse and have my court court case. I'm sitting around the table coloring, dude. That was one of the only things we did the, the entire time I was there that was slightly entertaining. We had a bunch of coloring books, colored pencils, and I'm sitting across from the dude who would tell me all of those BS stories about how he had a meth lab up in Alaska and like all, all these crazy things that he said he did, riding dirt bikes around, running from cops. I would just sit there and listen to his stories because they were just so entertaining. And it was like the only thing I could possibly do to get my mind off of, man, I'm locked up and I'm going to be here forever. Like those kind of thoughts. And this kid, this kid was wild, absolutely wild. And he just had the smart idea, just the smartest idea of going into the bathroom, which was right behind the table we were sitting on, wiped his ass with a paper towel, brought it out and put it into the colored pencil like bag, shook it around. And like everybody was just cracking up laughing at this table. And I have to admit, I, looking back on it, that's just gross, you know, like, but you know, 16 years old, n like... <laughs> There's nothing to do in this place. Anything is funny. You know, anything remotely humorous is just hilarious. So I'm sitting there laughing with them. And one of the staff members comes over. My face drops. Like, I'm not involved in this. And he picks up the colored pencil bag. Like, what the hell is this in there? And one of the kids at the table was like, oh, you probably don't want to touch that, man. And he's like, why? And he looks through the bag and he's just like, oh, drops the bag. Everybody to your rooms. Everybody at this table, room time right now. And I'm, I'm looking like, this wasn't me. I didn't, and this was, this wasn't me, dude. I didn't do this. And he's like, go to, go to the room right now. Go to the cell. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no, dude. The entire time I'm in here, perfect behavior. Now, two hours before the court date, two hours before, I'm beat, dude. This is it, dude. This is the moment that's going to land me another year in this place or something, man. I just know it. I'm, Dude, I'm having a panic attack in the cell, dude. Panic attack. I'm like banging on the door like, dude, that wasn't me, bro. That was, I had nothing to do with that. And they're like, shut up. That completely swapped my vibe, dude. Big vibe swap. I am just panicked, full of anxiety. Oh my God, I just ruined it. I just, oh man, all these days of good behavior down the drain. Listen, I was in, I was at the table, dude. They're gonna think I was involved. Like I, I initiated it or I told them to do it. He, dude, I'm thinking all the kids are gonna blame it on me. I had to sit in myself for the remainder of that two hours. And they're like, all right, your court case is up. Let's go, dude. Time to go. So I got I got my things. Dude, I was doing anything that, to be good. I was writing the judge letters every other day, dude. Like, dude, I, I'll never do this again. I'm a good kid. I promise I won't ever do anything bad, illegal again, dude. Just please let me out of here. I don't even think they got it, dude. I, <laughs> I had this like five paragraph essay written up, like ready to go, ready to give the judge. I don't even think I was able to even give it to them. All right, listen, I was just writing it up, trying to just be a good kid. So I got shackled up, get into the van the entire time. Just even more anxiety of the fir than the first time going. Like you'd think that the first time going there to a place you've never been in a situation, like I've never been to court before this, other than like the in-house juvie court. But that is like nothing compared to being in an actual courthouse. So now I'm just like, oh man. Oh, here we go, dude. Here we go. Like I was now I was involved in these shenanigans. And now I'm gonna be I'm I just extended my sentence probably another fucking couple months and but to my surprise, 
I get in there, I'm sitting in the room. This time I was completely alone in like the, the pre-court room where I had the bologna sandwich previous. And they brought me another sandwich. I don't remember what it was, but I remember getting into the courtroom, shackled up, seeing my dad. He's crying, dude. He doesn't like seeing me in the scenario. I mean, what parent would want to see their kid in shackles? Like, it's just not a good sight. And to my surprise, an entirely different vibe in this courtroom. The, the, the prosecutor, the person that was so against me earlier or on the, my previous court date was like actually saying positive things about me this time. He had great behavior the entire time. He seems to have learned his lesson. I have a letter from that person that I talked to that asked if I was like going to sell but like when I got out or like if that was what I was doing and said all these positive things. And on top of it, it was a different judge. It was a different one. They seem to be really pleased with all the things that they heard and they let me get released. The moment, dude, that those words, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't explain in words how happy I was. Finally, I'm gonna, gonna be able to enjoy my summer vacation. And then they hit me with the one month house arrest, six months probation. I was still happy. Listen, I was happy to just get out of there. I was like, I'll do anything, bro. Give me a year of probation. I don't care. I didn't say that, obviously. I was not. Listen, six months was enough. I was happy with any sort of consequences. I just wanted to go home. That's all I wanted to do. I remember getting released to my dad and just being so happy. Dude, the day outside, it was just so sunny and hot, feeling like it was such a nice day just to be able to go outside, see cars driving by. We went to Dunkin' Donuts. Actually, no, we went to the mall uh, to meet my girlfriend at the time. And I remember the Dunkin' Donuts that I got in the mall hit different, absolutely different. This is a really weird combination to with a lot of people, but the cinnamon raisin bagel toasted with strawberry cream cheese, the medium hazelnut dark roast with milk and sugar. I remember that order to this day, man. That's, that's what I used to always get. But man, that strawberry cream cheese was like the sweetest thing I've ever had in my life because there was no sugar or salt in any of the food in the juvie. And I, I just remember after saying goodbye to my girl, like we hung out at the mall for a little bit. We we're about halfway home. And dude, listen, I, <laughs> listen, I didn't go to the bathroom. I think the entire time I was in there for nine days nine days because i wasn't eating a lot of food on top of like dude metal toilet seats weird vibe like it's almost like when you go on vacation like your bowels just fucking just stop like they're just not working bro halfway home i'm not going into detail we had to stop at a mcdonald's that's how desperate i was a mcdonald's bathroom bro it was like taco bell times 10 i've never had taco bell in my life by the way one soft taco when i was a kid but listen other than that people call me a fake stoner never been to taco bell never got blazed at 1 a.m i went to taco bell but anyways, from what all the experiences I've heard, it was like Taco Bell times 10. So I'll never forget, I had the ankle bracelet on, going into going into the apartment. And dude, my dad was, he was, dude, he was so nice, bro. He cleaned up my room and everything. Like I got back, it just looked so perfect. And I'll never forget, number one, taking an actual shower. Oh, just, just amazing just amazing you know that feeling of when you go on to like a vacation you're gone for a week and then you go home and you lay down on your bed bro i've never felt a more comfortable bed in my lifetime it was it was just like i i sunk into it and i'm like oh man like just, just sitting down on a normal chair that actually has a cushion on it just just like the, the smallest little things that you take for granted in your everyday life was just so incredible. Now, dude, sitting down in my computer chair and being able to use the internet, it felt like I was the first time I'd ever used a computer. This was only nine days too. Like I wasn't even there for months or anything like that. It was just like a whole different world. It felt so weird. And I remember the one positive part about this entire situation was the one month of house arrest that I had to stay home and couldn't do anything you know i had some friends that would come over and just say hi and what's up and all that but like the the one positive thing was this time it was, it was the time that i had at my house that i couldn't leave i couldn't do anything fun and i was so bored dude i just like so freaking bored and during this time uh i remember calling the probation officer and asking if i could go to best buy with my dad and we went halves on a, a, a Meteor mic, a Samsung Meteor mic. It was $70. I had 30 bucks. Oh yeah, the entire time. Let me, let me tell you about this. Let me, let me tell you about this before I continue. So when I got back to my house, when I, before I got arrested, I had like $400 cash. 
and I hid it behind, I hid it underneath my pillow. So the cops didn't find that. <laughs> so, I, so I was sitting there with, you know, stacked with, with money from flipping Bud. Um, so I had that. So it was really cool. I think I ended up spending it all on alcohol throughout probation. But anyways, anyways. So I had that 30 bucks and I, I went halves with my dad. I don't know why I didn't just buy it outright. I don't think I wanted my dad to know I had all this money or something. Because who had $400 at the age of 16? And I didn't have a job. So he clearly would have known what, he, what I was doing. And at the time, I didn't want him knowing that I was selling bud. And this month of time was the time that I started this channel like really started the channel. I, I started with a couple gaming let's play videos that didn't have, you know, didn't have a lot of traction, but this was the time that all I could think about was going out with my friends, blazing, having a good time, but I couldn't because I was on probation. I was on house arrest. And if I messed up, I'd go back right back to juvie. So I was not trying to do that. But this was the time that I, I made the first time smoking weed video. And it, they even say in that video, I'm on house arrest right now, and all I want to do is go out with my friends and blaze, so I want to tell you guys about the first time that I smoked weed. Here's a clip of that video right here. You know that I'm on house arrest right now, and I just recently got arrested, so I can't smoke weed, and uh, I don't know, I've been thinking about it. I'm not, I, I, would, I would be lying to you guys if I said I didn't miss it, but um, I don't know, I just thought I'd share, I'd show you the, the first time I ever smoked weed because it was, it's kind of a funny story, so. So the one positive part about all of this is I was forced to stay home and just focus on anything I could that was, wasn't involving with leaving and messing up and going out with my friends and blazing, getting dirty pee tests and ended up back in juvie. So the one good part about all of this was I started the YouTube channel, man. Before that, I had like COD montages and random like COD commentaries and stuff, but like they weren't the stories. That was like what made me think of like, oh man, I have all these crazy experiences and all I want to do is talk about weed because that's all I want to do. Like that was the only thing my mind was focused on without getting arrested, without this entire event. I don't know if I'd be here making videos for you guys right now. I really don't know. I was barely home at that point. I was just off selling bud and just like messing around with my friends. I wasn't like really, really focused on the channel. And during that month, that was like the first couple videos that actually got some views because at the time there was no one really talking about weed in the COD commentary scene. Weed was like Voldemort. You don't want to talk about it because it's not brand friendly and, and everybody will like look down on you or something, but I didn't care. Like, I didn't care at all. So do I think I deserved all of this for just 10, 10 grams, a grinder, and leaving, leaving my house, not telling my dad where I was for a week? I'm going to say no. I don't think I deserve to be locked up in juvie for that. Especially considering all of the staff members and all of the kids were like, wait, what? First offense and weed? Like, what? How are you in here right now? Do I hold a grudge for the, the local police department for putting me there? A little bit. Listen, it made me not like police officers. It really did. It really felt unfair at the time. And looking back on it, like, yeah, I think they were, it was a dick move to, to really do that. I really do. But hey, man, now that it's legal, it's kind of funny to look back on and say, hey, I got arrested when I was a kid for weed. I, I bet when, you know, 10, 20 years from now, it's going to be like, what? You got arrested for weed? Like, how? I think the main reason, you know, reflecting on it, the main reason that I ended up in juvie was because I left home without telling my dad where I was on top of just really bad behavior in school. It was just the final straw. I think the weed was just like a way that the cops could just get me because they were looking for me that entire week and couldn't find me. They were pissed, dude. They were mad at me because they couldn't find me, dude. It was the funniest thing ever to me. So they just use that golden opportunity to just teach me a lesson. And I'd like to say it kind of, you know, it, it kind of, you know, made, it just made, all, the only thing it did is made me realize like, all right, I'm not a kid anymore. I can get tried as an adult. I can't be messing around like I used to. And that's really all it did. Did it really teach me a lesson? I don't really think it did because honestly, throughout the six months of probation, like the moment, literally the day I got off house arrest, I went to my friend's house and tripped on acid. <laughs> Literally the day. I don't know if I was really scared straight. And then the entirety of the six months of probation, I was smoking K2, drinking alcohol almost every day. So listen, I was trying to, I was doing anything I could just to get messed up and not be sober. Anytime I ever, ever mention K2, I have to say, do not ever do that in your entire life. It is by far the worst thing, the biggest regret I ever had. I regret smoking K2 more than I regret starting to smoke cigarettes. 
So please, never do that shit. It's fucked up. It feels horrible. And it's just a mystery drugs. You never know what that's doing to your brain. So I'm really grateful that all cannabinoids have taken over that like, oh, I can't smoke weed, so I got to do this. Listen, don't ever do K2. It's the most fucked up thing I've ever done in my life. I was drinking four locos every day. It was really bad. Those are just, oh, God, I shiver when I'm even thinking about that, dude. Oh. Malt liquor is just disgusting. So yeah, that concludes the juvenile experience. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like on the video if you guys did. And I have to say, man, there was some positive positive parts, you know? Like, I really don't know if my channel were, would be where it is today if I didn't find that story format from that time that I was just so locked up in my room and not being able to do anything. And all I wanted to think about was weed and all the crazy stories I had. And I'm forever grateful for just being able to be here and make videos for you guys it, it just it's a dream come true for real uh looking back at you know this moment when i started started these i would have never in a million years imagined it would have turned into this and i love you guys man thank you for watching thank you for spending the time out of your day to watch my video before this video ends i want to say thank you to everybody who's supporting me on patreon for a dollar to a month you can get access to the blazing videos growing updates question and answers where I'm just, you know, blazing on some J's and just having a good time, man. It's, it's a fun time making those videos. Thank you for the support. All the names on screen. You guys really helped me out. More information in the description and in a pinned comment below. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever ended up in juvenile detention or if you know anybody that ended up there for something crazy or maybe something like, you know, something BS, like just a, a couple couple grams of bud or something or something I didn't really deserve to be there for. I know some of you guys have some crazy ass stories to tell me in the comments and I'm looking forward to reading them. I do read like 90% of the comments. Like I can't go back to videos five, you know, two years ago and read every single one. But for the first couple days, I do read all of the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending the time out of your day to watch my video. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Stay high, stay lifted, and stay snazzy.